Hey there. I've been spending probably too much of my time looking into airtight custom doors in Space Engineers. In this video, I'll showcase you some of my designs and go over some tips and tricks I used. I built an invisible door, then a simple sliding door, then some doors with spinning parts. And then a more complex sliding doors. Then also an absolutely tiny airlock. After filming the intro, I also made this thing. My journey into airtight doors began with this. I wanted to see how invisible of a door I could make. And as you can see, it turned out to be quite invisible. There aren't any seams you can see. But I promise you, there is a door there. And it just completely vanishes. The door fits in this space three blocks wide. It contains all the opening mechanisms and merge blocks. I hoped I could get rid of this divot in the floor, but I wasn't able to do it without creating some visible seams in these corners, since I had to use different blocks here. Then I made this simple sliding door. It uses just pistons to move the doors. Tip number one. If you have the space, I'd highly recommend you make your doors at least two blocks wide. So you have more space to make details in the doors and also you can hide the non-flush pieces of your doors better if you have at least two rows of blocks. With one row of blocks from one of the sides of the doors you can see this like sloped part. These pieces are uh, very useful in the outside corners of uh, airtight spaces or doors or flaps or whatever you're gonna build. After that I had an idea for this door with four spinning quadrants. Tip number two, you can't have hinges touch the same grid on both sides, so these door pieces wouldn't connect to the door frame unless I added these intermediary blocks here. They have four rotors that keep this piece in place and then the hinges are connected to it, so they always stay uh, connected to a separate grid from the door frame, even though these pieces become the same grid with the door frame. It's a <clears throat> bit clangy. I found it very difficult to make these arrow shaped pieces to look good. The spinning quadrants themselves are only one block wide in this design and they're also flat on both sides so I had to make the arrow shaped pieces not stick to them. They look quite horrendous on the inside.
I wanted to make something that is clean looking like this, but sadly there's no way to make connection like this airtight since you can't join the grids together because they occupy the same block space. You could make the round piece out of whole blocks and same for the arrow shape but then it wouldn't look as clean as this. If you're not looking for air tightness, uh, your design like this would be quite nice. Then I managed to make a slightly improved and cleaner version of the same sort of door. Here I use quadrants that are uh, two blocks wide, so I add more freedom with the surface on both sides. Since these are set in half a block, I could make these arrowhead shapes more detailed, but I was still left with a jagged edge there. These shapes are also quite a bit cleaner on the inside, but this is a bit too wide of a door for my taste. It looks cool though. These pieces are excellent for using in uh, inside corners of airtight spaces. Since you can have two airtight faces here, with this one being completely open. So you can have it against stuff and it won't connect to it, but still give you a seal. Then I tried designing a more complex sliding door, but sadly I wasn't able to make this design airtight yet. There are these holes on each side. I can not make these sliding parts part of the same grid as these doors, since they once again occupy the same block space. Then I had the idea of making a, like a cover here on the top and the bottom that's airtight. After having played with the timings and speeds of the pistons, so I could make the parts of the doors go around these airtight parts, I realized I still had to do the same thing for the side latches here, and sadly, because of how these parts slide around the top part, I wasn't able to do it, so I just removed them. But then, as I was showering today, I had an epic idea. So here, it looks like these sliding latches are part of the same grid as the rest of this, but actually they aren't. I have hinges here inside these sliding parts, so these are actually different grid from the rest of the door. Once it closes, so these covers on the outside do actually become part of the same grid, so it's airtight. But the latches themselves still stay as a separate grid, so they can occupy the same blocks as the slopes here in the door. Tip number three, you can have uh, one push button to control two different sequences depending on whether the door is open or closed. So here the uh, four white parts start moving before the black parts and when it's closed the black parts start moving before the white parts. This can be done. I'm gonna try to explain this better in the ultimate graphics program paint. So you have the button you want to uh, press for stuff to happen. The button triggers the initial timer block, which does two things. First, it toggles the sequences 
meaning you have the first timer of either of the sequences. The initial timer block switches the uh, on-off state of the timer to the other one. And then it starts both of the sequences, meaning it triggers both of the timers. But as only one of them is turned on, only that sequence initiates. So as this is on, this timer is started. It does its stuff and as the final entry in the actions list, it triggers this next timer. And again, it does some stuff and then it triggers this next timer and so on and so on until there are no timers to trigger in the sequence. And then as you press the button again, boop, press it again, it toggles the sequence. It changes the on off state of all of the first timers in the sequences. So this goes to on as it previously was off and this goes to off as it previously was in the on state. And then it starts the sequences. So it tries to start both of these timer A and timer B. But this time timer A is the only one that is on. So it starts and does its things and then uh, starts the next timer in the sequence, so timer A2, and it does its things and triggers the next one, and so on, and so on. You could also chain these together, so like for uh, timer A1, treat it as the initial timer block, sort of like this. So now the A1 timer is the initial timer block of the next, uh, like switch, so this would now be AA for example, and this would be a b, and then the a1 timer does the same thing as this initial timer block, and you could add this end on end as many as you want, so you could have like four or eight different things that happened every time you press the button. This reminds me of a half adder. I hope this cleared it up a bit. I'm not sure what to call it. It has this uh, pillars evenly spaced with the other ones coming from the top. They lock in place using merge blocks. It has way too many pistons. Finally, I built this absolutely minuscule airlock. It's barely higher than the engineer. You can only fit in it while crouching, but it's completely functional and self-contained with a battery, two timer blocks to control the marriage blocks and doors. This is about the tiniest standard airlock you can make in space engineers. It's five blocks wide about six blocks tall, although you can shave a bit off with the half armor blocks and four blocks deep. And meanwhile, the custom airlock is four blocks wide, four blocks tall and four blocks deep. Absolutely tiny, minuscule. Well, it's not that much smaller, considering it needs room for the doors to open. Probably ends up being a bit larger. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed the video consider liking it and checking out my channel for other related content. I was gonna make a tutorial on how to make these custom airtight doors, but I decided it probably requires its own video. If it's something you'd like to see, please tell me so in the comments. Bye bye.